Art is a universal peacekeeper among all nations, you know, all other ethnic people. Their art was a start of them. Even though they've disappeared, what did they leave behind? Art. <laughs> and then, of course, there's those who destroy art. Things that are even unexplainable, things that are a mystery to, to man itself. A lot of it consists of artwork, and you can't replace it. It is a thing that uh, comes from people's feelings, comes from down deep, something that they have to express, something they have to show, something they have to let out into the world. And be it that it looks good or it don't look good, that don't matter. What matters is, is that they are doing that. Oh my God, I work with anything. <laughs> uh, I try to express myself with uh, the ledger artists. Even though my, my material, my paper material is not really that much ledger. Mine's a lot of documents, uh, marriage license, uh, bonds, uh, certificates, uh, different kind of categories of such. The only thing I can really say is I try to make things to where it can go behind glass and hang on a wall. It's not sticking out all over the place. But as far as um, the procedure of doing a piece of artwork, it's, it's hard to say because I add to a picture, I take away from a picture, I move things around in a picture, I, I throw the whole thing away. <laughs> or I start all over, I, don't, I never really throw anything away. Or I start all over and try to get it right or do it better. But the factor of just doing a piece of artwork, it's sometimes it's just what I see. Sometimes it, I could be looking at the stars. Sometimes I could be looking at a mountain. You know, sometimes I see animals run by. You know, it, it, it's just what hits you at the moment. You know, and I guess finding the position for certain things of adornment in a picture just has to depend on whether you put it here, put it there, take it, put it over here, put it over here, like a jigsaw puzzle. I grab something, I explore different angles with it or different, you know, positions with it. Uh, I never, I try to work on maybe five or six pieces at once. And if it don't go here, maybe it goes there. If it don't go uh, down the line, you know, and then hopefully I find the right spot for it. Otherwise it goes in the pile next month. <laughs> It helps me to know that there are other artists out there that are not doing what I do, but they're doing something to say, well, he's part of that category. You know, I figure I'm part of the category of ledger artists because I try my best to do what I can with that involved in my art. Native Americanism, tribal art, uh, history. We got to remember that a lot of this artwork that I've done has a story, a legend, it's folklore, it's history, it's our past, maybe our future, and, and you know, it, it has its own meaning. In history, in 1862, they hung 38 warriors in Mankato, Minnesota. And when I go to make a picture about that, there's the number 38 plus two. And I go around to coin stores and find pennies with the date 1862. And all these things that have Native American meaning because it is a Native American piece are installed in this picture to make it the story, to make it be told of that situation. Those 1862 pennies are all the year that it happened. The 38 pennies is how many were hung. The beadwork that was done back then, maybe a map showing how they were chased out of Minnesota into the Dakotas 
uh, you know, all these things go installed in, in that piece. The names, the names of the 38 that were hung are written on something, on a piece of leather strip and, and left dangling in there to show that they're hanging. You know, all this represents that piece. And we're just talking about the hanging of the 38. Wounded knee, that could be another one of, you know, the, the gra mass grave and stuff. All these things that uh, happen, I try to install into the picture something from that time period or something that has to do with that time period or information from that time period or just right, you know, the story alone itself. You know, they, uh, they sang their death chants and, and they have that in writing. You could put that up in the corner and, and such, the, the death chant that they sang and, and, and just anything that you can find and put together in that picture that represents that time. And that's just one of many things. Like the missing, murdered indigenous women. You know, you look at that and then when you, you maybe you have a hard time wondering, okay, what is this about? And once you say murdered or missing indigenous women, it just pretty much comes to you, what they're talking about, what I tried to install, what I tried to put across there. These women back here that uh, murdered and missing indigenous women, that is real hair in there. Um, I try not to uh, falsify my art as such of beadwork. I don't use plastic beads. I use actual glass beads, our brass beads, our actual bone. And I'm not trying to be morbid with my art. I'm, I'm trying to express a full feeling of what I'm trying to pass on, the truth. I try to get out the truth. Being able to come up with materials, that's a, another big factor of finding things and being able to uh, accommodate things to go into my pieces. I tried many different uh, medias and none of them worked for me. I mean, I could do, I could do some things in it. Paintings, drawings, uh, pencil work. I can do those things, but, but there's so many artists that are just wonderful at it, just awesome. And um, I tried to be a, a person up there with them, you know, and there's just no room for me. <laughs> there's uh, a lot of different ideas of different media, and that's what my big thing is. I do something like ledger art. I watch those, those artists do their ledger art and Oscar Howe and stuff and their beautiful paintings and everything else. I said, all right, I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna make it my own. I'm gonna cut out the horses. I'm gonna cut out the warriors. I'm gonna cut out the, the this and that that belong to the buffaloes, the buffaloes or whatever, the teepees. I'm gonna cut them out of leather. I'm gonna to put toothpicks through the front end for the doorway. I'm gonna do additives. I'm gonna do takeaways. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna make it stand up a little bit more off the paper. The document is there, but everything on the document stands off of it. It's just something different. And then when I finally accomplished doing that, I started just making my own background and making things stand off of it, such as this one back here. Things just stand forward from it and it is something different. Now, the way the story goes is I did mixed media. I call it mixed media. But a lot of people said, well, watercolor and acrylic together is mixed media. So I said, all right, I'll call it multi-mixed media. So they put the same two things together and they put one flower in the corner and they call that multi-mixed media. So being my last name, Fog, I said, I'll start my own and I'll do Fogma, which is all kinds of pieces put together to tell a story, a legend, a tale, a fable, a piece of history, or a piece of now, or a piece of the future. The first time I saw art, it would probably have to be a Donald Monolo piece. I believe it was his ghost dancer piece or his winter dancer. Piece. It, it just seemed that 
It was an image that was put in the center surrounded by art in itself. The whole piece was a piece of art, of course, but just that piece, the way it was, helps me to centerize everything I do. I have a middle and I go out from that with some adornment of some such. You know, but once I did see that, I began to see a lot of other artists just immediately after that, because I believe my uh, ideal of curiosity just exploded right then and there. I said, wow, I can do something like this. I really believe I can. Well, my childhood, I was raised on a homestead that was given to my great grandfather and grandmother. And um, I lived there with my grandparents. And uh, the, the city of Fort Thompson on the Crow Creek Reservation didn't really have much to offer me. And, uh, and like I said, the only exciting thing for me was the annual powwow that happened, uh, the Indian dance. Wachipi, the, the dance, you know, the singers, the, the colorfulness, the, the enjoyment, uh, the excitement of it all. You know, you, you get out there on a grand entry and you just, it's just ah, awesome. It's, you look at everything that there is out there and you know you'll never be able to see everything. But your imagination takes over there and, and helps you to visualize what you are missing in my artistic way of doing things, of course. Uh, people never really realize the urgency or the feeling inside that you want to express yourself. And when you do feel it, sometimes you have that problem of deciding how to do it. Well, I found out that basically the things that surrounded me, where I was, my environment, helped me along the way to decide that I wanted to be an artist back when I was what you would call almost a little more than a toddler. You know, it started with uh, time after school. I didn't have much to do. Living on a uh, uh, farmstead with my grandparents and such. I looked for things to do, hobbies to be, to, keep, to occupy my time other than looking at the stars. <laughs> my brother, he reminds me all the time of how we used to do art together and we created things together. And uh, it was a, something that was just left of us to do in a place where there wasn't very much to do at all. You, you waited for the annual powwow to come. You went fishing, swimming, of course, which was very liked, uh, rode horseback, and, and you know, but those can only last so long. But something that means something to you deep inside, being able to create and have something to show for what you are doing at that time period is what we did. All the images I used as a child drawing, being horses and buffaloes, it, it was the kind of into the religious aspect of uh, my relatives that were being put upon me at the time, being that told the stories we could not survive without the buffalo, being that the horse was a sacred animal that was brought to us. You know, even if it wasn't, it was told in stories as such and believed as such by some people. So I took that upon myself to also have the, the courage to believe in those things. So the images of horses, buffaloes, was my strong point. But as time goes on, I learned the stories and such of wolves and coyotes and, you know, even right down to the little old ground squirrel. <laughs> as I grew older, you know, and, and, and developed the value of certain materials, I looked at ashes on the end of a stick from a fire. I looked at uh, berries being squashed. I looked at, you know, just 
putting things on top of paper and, you know, letting it stick to it and stuff. Additive things, an adornment of such as they call it today. What I do today is a way different than what I did when I was a child in, in my essence of trying to find myself with my niche. And as I grew older, my, uh, and my artistic abilities kind of arose, I had relatives, aunties and uncles and stuff that would give me things like uh, Western stuff, you know, um, belts, old leather belts, and, and uh, aunties and grandmas would give me star quilts and, and things that they made that were small that I could use in my art ribbons and, and things that they had half sewn and never finished and, and, and just kind of give me ideas to braid things and do what, what not with it and add it to things and make things. And as I grew older and older, I, that stuck with me. You'd be walking down the street and all of a sudden, bing, here comes an ideal for a piece. I'm gonna run home. <laughs> I gotta get this on paper. I decided to become an artist, like, like, like they said, when I moved into a bigger city that had places available. And then from then on, I, I said, well, I'm gonna take my chances at places like museums and galleries. And by then I had created a lot more pieces to put up in these galleries. And I, uh, I even was told by the gallery person that I really like your stuff, I like it so much, I referred you to the gallery across town. And then from then on, the word got out that you gotta get this guy's artwork in your gallery, it's different, you know? And that's where I'm saying, it goes back to the part to where I'm not saying I'm better than these artists, I'm different. My artwork is different, and by that time, my artwork had started to excel in that direction of adornment into something behind glass that was sellable. <laughs> I like to share my artwork with anybody who will take the time to understand it, not just say, oh, that's pretty, and walk on to the next one. You know, uh, you know to, to understand the piece of artwork is to actually enjoy the piece of art. The, the museum, to begin with, is great. This museum here you're talking about, yes, yes. The museum is great. They've been so nice to me, you know, and they've allowed me to express myself. And in doing that, it is just a joy. I'll always advertise this place. I'll always talk about this place now that that has happened. Before it was just, I wish I could get in there. You know, now that I have been here, it is a joy, you know, it, it, it lifts me to a category to where I am good enough for that place. Don't let anybody judge your art. Keep going, keep going, because already I just said art, didn't I? You, what you do is art. It don't matter how it looks. It don't matter what it is. It's coming out of you on a piece of paper or uh, a nail in, in, in wood or, or whatnot. It's a piece of art that you did. And henceforth, it's art. So just keep going, keep moving. You know, the thing I like to say to children about being artists is if you're gonna be an artist, be an artist. Don't go in there just to waste time or daydream, you know. If you're gonna think about things, think about art because you're in an art class. You go in there because you wanna be part of creating something. You wanna be something special that can bring something from nothing. Go in there with the positive attitude. If you want to be an artist, stick with it, push it. It's there, it'll happen. Because like I said before, it's art. And it doesn't matter how it looks or what people think of it, it's art. And art is art. <laughs>